I think what surprised me the most was I'd always envisioned going to space since I was a kid, being extraordinary, and it was every single aspect about it was even more extraordinary than I, than I, than I'd, uh, I could possibly have dreamt of. Sir Richard Branson there talking just after he returned to Earth after his first trip to space on his Virgin Galactic craft. He's part of the new billionaire space race going on right now. Branson, along with Amazon's Jeff Bezos and Tesla's Elon Musk, all have private space exploration companies that are looking to commercialize space travel so that more people can experience it. Humans have been venturing into space for 60 years now, but the wonder of sending someone off planet has not diminished since those early days. I wanted to ask you about the future of space and the situation as it stands today. Russia and the United States have really led the way when it comes to space travel and exploration. Space has been a fantastic arena for international cooperation, but it's also increasingly becoming an arena where we see international competition. Do you welcome that competition and how do you see the future actually playing out from an international perspective? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, space has been just this beautiful example of international cooperation. Even you go back to the, you know, when you say like Russia and the U.S., go back to Apollo Soyuz, where you had the Soviet spacecraft docking with this American spacecraft. The crew members are shaking hands and, you know, living for a little while in space together. They were best friends for the rest of their lives. I mean, that was a pivotal moment in terms of how do we come together as an international community, not just in space, but here on Earth. And it's continued with the International Space Station. All of those countries that are participating in one way or another are still competing as well. And I think it's healthy competition, though, when you look at, at those countries. They're all wanting to continue to develop their tech, to bring that to life. And yet I think we're always going to be coming together to really make it happen in space. Um, there's a lot of other countries, you know, now that are also trying to develop their activities. Um, I actually look at that competition as a way for us to reinvigorate ourselves, to really kind of lift ourselves up even more and understand it from both the good and bad sides of what could happen from, you know, some of these other countries wanting to gain access to different places in space and how we need to be positively engaging to make it a good scene up there. And, and then, of course, you have the commercial activities going on, and I'm like, yes, let's, let's get that going. I know there's a lot of argument about the billionaires doing their thing in space, and I'm like, please. You know, those are the baby steps that we need to take to make it more accessible to, you know, to anyone who wants to have that access. Why do you welcome that? Because I guess the criticism has been that that is just a, a pure personal pursuit. They're not doing it for the betterment of society or humanity. They're doing it for themselves. What do you say to that? Well, go talk to them is what I'd say. And I, I, you know, maybe they need better calm people or something, but every single one of those people has a really wonderful motivation behind it. Even if it's business driven, there's, you know, you look at Bezos, suborbital flights are not that man's goal in, um, for space flight. You know, he ultimately wants to lift the, the nasty industrial stuff off the planet into the relatively benign environment of space and do that in a way that's sustainable so that Earth does become this, you know, this park-like paradise that we all want it to be in the future, right? And those, those are pretty wonderful motivations. Um, same thing with Musk, you know, yeah, he wants to get to Mars. He want, I, I think he wants to go to Mars himself, you know, and he speaks about a multi-planetary species, you know, saving ourselves that way. Um, again, lifting some of what's going on on Earth off of it to improve life here. Um, those, those are pretty positive motivation. I just don't think that is what's communicated um, necessarily. What happens next when it comes to the future of space exploration and how soon before we get to Mars? You know, I don't know the answer about Mars. I hope, I hope in my lifetime. Um, I think the next step really is the moon. Um, but if you look at NASA, you know, we're kind of transitioning from this idea of the Apollo era, the space station era, to this um, era of Artemis, where, you know, the diversity thing you mentioned is like, that's all part of that as well, the accessibility of space and getting, you know, people back on the moon, around the moon, establishing a permanent presence there that will allow us to get to Mars, I think, in a more efficient way, and also will be leveraging the resources of the moon for the benefit of life here on Earth. And through the Artemis program, we're looking at our, 
you know, first woman, first wo or person of color stepping foot on the moon, and I think that's a pretty exciting thing as well.